All right, so we've set up our document at four by four uh, because that's going to be the size of our material. Okay, so after we set up our document, we're going and just, if you ever wanna check your document size, um, what you can do is use this artboard tool. So if we select that, what you should see up here is that you have four inches by four inches. Sometimes we go in there and we set up our document and maybe our units are on something else. So that's the artboard tool, which is above the hand tool. All right. So the next thing we'll do is to make our square or rectangle. So we could select this from here. We could just draw out a rectangle. All right, and now we have, on the bottom of our toolbar is an illustrator, if we haven't talked about this yet, is our fill and our stroke size. All right, uh, colors rather. So this, the solid box is your fill. So this says there's no color inside of it, whereas there is a black outline, that's our stroke, all right? So if we wanted to change that to something else, we could just double click this and choose a color, but it doesn't really matter for right now. All right, also over here on the side is in your properties panel, let's make our stroke one. All right, so that we can see that line nice and clearly. All right, any questions so far? If you're stuck, if you're not up to this point, please let me know now before I go further so that we can correct that. All right, next thing then we're gonna do is use um, another shape. As you can see, when you press and hold the rectangle tool, we have multiple shapes or various ones here. Um, we can start with an ellipse tool, as I did on the example, and just draw an ellipse if you hold the shift key, it'll make a perfect circle. If you let go, it'll be kind of more um, irregular. And then we can move this over. Let's try to get this centered directly on the square. Now we can visually do this. Um, you have these what are called smart guides. So if you drag over it, it's going to kind of snap we have that line there which sometimes can be hard to to get but we can see that pink line shows up there another way to align these is to draw a box around both so I have the selection tool I don't mean draw a rectangle so I apologize if I cause some confusion there with that we're using the selection tool we're gonna select both and then on your in your um, palettes you have an align palette so in here we could just select um, align horizontal centers and I guess that was that I did have that there all right we wouldn't want to do align vertical centers because now that puts them in the middle there so maybe in a different situation that would be good but not this one all right everybody good so far with having our overlapping shapes do you need time or do you need me did something not work in there Kendra Oh, you got it? Okay. So now we're going to combine these into one. So to do that, <clears throat> as the directions say, we're going to select, we're going to first select the, um, wait. We select? No. All right. So first we have to select both shapes just as we did to align. So we just use the selection tool. I like using a click and drag. You can just select the circle, hold shift, and select the square. Um, Another way also, by the way, with Illustrator, if we went to layers, and um, what you can do, bless you. If you notice here, you have dots next to the items that are selected. So if I click here, they unselect, but I can go here and I can select them there also. So if you ever have items like that are really overlapping and it's hard to select one over another, um, that would allow you to do that also. 
All right, so a couple ways to select your shapes. And then we're gonna find this shape builder tool. All right, it looks like two overlapping circles with an arrow, all right, right here. All right, as soon as we do that, we see these options on here as we hover over our shapes. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna left click and drag through, and now that combines all of our shapes together. All right, so that gives you the power to clean up a lot of shapes. And as I wrote in the directions, you can also delete parts of something. So let's say instead of, just for example, all right, if I press the Alt key, let's see, what could I delete here? Maybe I get rid of this line here. All right, so we have something like that instead. All right, I don't think that's really going to be helpful for our, our uh, shape here, but that could be another kind of use of that. All right, I'll just leave it at that for now. All right, does anybody need help applying that shape builder? Everybody's good? All right, the last thing to do here is to create this shape on the outside. All right. Um, I think initially you might think, oh, I can just copy and paste that. And if we do that, I'll show you why that's not exactly the best way to do it. Because if we drag this over here, notice that the curvature is different, all right? It's not proportional, not equal spacing going around it, right? By just copying and pasting and scaling it. Whereas on this one, you notice that it is an equal space all the way around. So we're going to use a tool or a function called offsetting the path. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my shape and I'm going to say object path offset path. All right. This gives you a little dialog box, uh, which gives you the um, option of how far. So the offset distance is how far it's going to be um, and you do have a preview button so before you finalize it you can put that in there I would suggest a distance of 0 0.05 all right we want and what this is going to do for your ornament is that it would cut pretty closely to your artwork and leave a little bit of space um, but that would kind of be your own personal preference as far as how much of a space that you want around your object um, you don't even necessarily have to have this line in here. So if we said none, so in this case, then you wouldn't see that kind of border around it. It would just end up being cutting there. All right. So there is our overall shape. Um, and then finally, we're going to talk about our laser settings. All right. So in order for the, just like when we had the, um, our stickers, we had to assign a swatch color. The laser engraver understands stroke weight or line thickness. So what we're gonna do is we're going to select this stroke and in our properties, we can select um, 0, 0.0, actually is it in there? No, it's not a default. So you have to type it in. Uh, if it's points, it's 0 0.072, all right? Or if your stroke was in inches, it would be 0 0.001. All right, so that would be your, your shape. We would want to put one, another circle to hang your ornament, kind of right towards the top. And that should be 0 0.072 as well. All right, so there's the design component. Uh, I would like you all to copy over the text and actually get the, uh, a screenshot of your shape builder tool so you remember which one that is. And actually, I'll, I'll have you put your name in here. So you're making an illustration which will kind of give you directions 
and reminders on how to perform this process. Um, remember for your images that they should be image traced in order to be properly uh, engraved so you don't otherwise you're gonna have like some weird dot patterns I'm actually gonna write that down here in the bottom so if you're finding an image on the internet they should be image traced. Or, I guess, hand drawn in Illustrator. Yes, Brian? Say again? Uh, 0 0.05, I think, worked well. I'll zoom in on this in a second. I know that's small. All right, so this is basically your final product of what you have here. And um, when you're done, I would like you to print with trim marks so that I can verify the size. So we're just going to here. And that would be your print setting. Um, online, if you all could either save a PDF or a JPEG and uh, email it to me or put it on uh, Twitter today, 